Hello, my dear students. Uh, today, uh, I will be discussing about uh, stress distribution under Unit 1. An important function in the study of soil mechanics or geotechnical engineering is to predict the stresses and strains imposed at a given point in a soil mass due to certain loading conditions. Okay, the, so the main uh, function of the geotechnical engineering is to uh, estimate the stress and the strain which is imposed at a point in the soil mass due to the certain types of loading conditions. This helps to estimate settlement uh, and to conduct stability analysis of earth and earth retaining structures uh, as well as to determine um, uh, stress conditions on underground and uh, earth retaining structures uh, and also to analyze uh, problems such as compressibility of soils, bearing capacity of foundations, uh, stability of embankments, uh, that is nothing but slope stability and lateral pressure on earth retaining structures. We need to know the nature of the distribution of the stress along a given cross section of the soil profile. When a load is applied to the soil surface, it increases the vertical stresses within the soil mass. This is the important thing you know. When the load is applied on the soil mass, there will be increase in the vertical stress within the soil mass. The increased stresses are directly under the loaded area but extend indefinitely in all the directions. Okay, it is maximum under the load that increased uh, vertical stresses and it extends indefinitely in all the directions. The vertical stress increase with the depth must be determined to calculate the amount of settlement that a foundation may undergo. Foundations and structures placed on the surface of the earth will produce stresses in the soil. These stresses will decrease with the distance from the load. How these stresses decrease depends upon the nature of the soil bearing the load. You can see here, uh, this gives uh, a rough idea about uh, the stress distribution in the soil and how it can be calculated. Okay, so main thing, this is stress distribution in the soil. So mainly there are two types of stresses are developed. One is geostatic stresses. Second one is added stresses. It may be due to a point load or it may be due to a line or it may be due to a strip or it may be a triangular, circular or rectangular. These are all added stresses, additional stresses. But this is always will be the geostatic stresses. Under geostatic stresses there are total stress effective stress and poor water pressure these are all you have studied in shear strength chapter this total stress that is nothing but the effective stress plus poor water pressure how we can calculate this effective stress so effective stress you know you have uh, we have calculated by using the morse coulomb equation right so the vertical uh, force is acting here so okay this is the depth depth z and uh, now we'll see how to calculate this uh, added stresses this may be due to the various reasons i as i said it may be a point line strip triangular circular or rectangular loading so there are mainly three uh, uh, methods are there the first one is the first one is bosini's equation second one is Westergaard's equation and third one is approximate method okay so uh, under this uh, Bosinis equation uh, there are uh, different types like a point load line load strip load triangular load circular you can calculate all these loads that is nothing but you have to calculate horizontal stress vertical stress and shear stress sigma x sigma y and tau xy so vertical stress uh, horizontal stress and shear stress then uh, for this uh, equation, Bosinis equation, we are using influence charts and uh, uh, stress bulbs and also 
new mark charts okay for this westergaard method that is direct analysis and approximate method there are some methods now we'll study each method in detail okay i hope all of you understood so mainly geostatic stresses and additional stresses and uh, uh, geostatic stresses already we have done that is uh, using most coulomb you can calculate what is total stress effective stress pore water pressure etc and for the additional stress you have to use bosinus equation westergaard methods and approximate method for that uh, bosinus equation there are different types of uh, influence charts stress bulbs new marks charts these things you have to use so now let us see what is first geostatic stresses stresses due to self weight are known as geostatic stresses this already you have studied i'll just brush up okay so all of us we know uh, k not that is nothing but earth pressure at rest that is equal to 1 minus sin phi where phi is the friction angle and uh, this is uh, z uh, soil mass which is located this is a soil mass which is located at a distance of z from the ground surface so the unit weight of the soil is gamma into s yes. okay so uh, we know uh, the earth pressure or coefficient of earth pressure that is equal to the ratio of horizontal uh, pressure horizontal stress to the vertical stress correct so um, uh, what you will get sigma v that is vertical stress that is equal to z into gamma and sigma uh, h that is horizontal stress that is equal to k not into sigma dash v i will explain in detail this Uh, when the ground surface is horizontal the stresses due to self weight of the soil are normal to the horizontal and vertical planes and are no uh, and there are no shearing stresses on these planes so these planes are called as principal planes okay so means when the ground surface is horizontal the stresses due to self weight of the soil are normal to horizontal and vertical planes but there is no shearing stresses so such type of planes are called as principal planes now there are types of stresses two types of stresses vertical stresses and horizontal stresses okay now vertical stresses vertical stresses at depth z below the ground surface due to self weight of the soil is given by gamma into z okay you need weight into the depth sigma z is the vertical stress so gamma is unit weight of the soil z is the depth below the surface horizontal stresses the horizontal stresses at any point in the soil mass are highly variable and this stress is given by this formula it may be a horizontal stress is sigma x or it may be a sigma y that is equal to k not into gamma into z this we have studied in earth pressure uh, Uh, theory so that is nothing but k not is the coefficient of earth pressure at rest condition okay if it is ka that is active and if it is kp that is passive earth pressure so k not into gamma into z this is the horizontal stress where k not is coefficient of lateral earth pressure at rest k not is also equal to mu divided by 1 minus mu mu is nothing but poisson's ratio poisson's ratio also you know that is nothing but the ratio of lateral strain to the linear strain now vertical stresses due to self weight increases with the depth there are three types of geostatic stresses i have already shown in the tape uh, that uh, diagram that is total stress sigma total and effective stress sigma dash and pore water pressure u Uh, total stress is nothing but it is the summation of effective stress plus pore water pressure that is sigma total is equal to sigma dash plus u okay now uh, let us see what is pore water pressure if the pores of the soil mass are filled with water and if a pressure induced into the pore water tries to separate the grains this pressure is termed as termed as pore water pressure okay it is nothing but the pressure exerted by the water which is present in the pores 
the pore water pressure at any depth will be hydrostatic since the void space between the solid particles is continuous. Therefore, at depth z, u is always equal to gamma into z, unit weight into the depth that is equal to pore water pressure. Effective vertical stress, the pressure transmitted through grain to grain at the contact points through a soil mass is termed as effective pressure or effective stress. It is the pressure which is exerted through the soil mass or small, uh, small uh, size of the soil at the contact points uh, through the soil mass that is effective pressure or effective stress. The difference between the total stress and the pore water pressure in a saturated soil has been defined by Terzaghi as that is the effective stress. Total stress minus pore water pressure is equal to effective stress that is sigma dash. Sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u. This all you have studied in shear strength uh, chapter. Sigma dash total is equal to sigma total minus u. Now let us see what are the stresses which are due to the self weight of the soil. Mainly the stresses are developed by two components. The first one is due to the self weight of the soil and other one is due to the external loading. So first see, uh, we will see what is stresses due to the self weight of the soil. That is nothing but vertical geostatic stress at any depth that is equal to weight of the soil above that depth. So, unit weight of the soil is constant with depth. So, that is equal to sigma equal to gamma into z, where z is depth and gamma is unit weight of soil. You can see here, this is due to the self weight of the soil, sigma v and sigma h, horizontal pressure, vertical pressure. Soil density generally increases with depth because of compression caused by geostatic stress. Second point is unit weight of the soil varies continuously with the depth. Uh, so that is sigma is equal to uh, this is 0 to z gamma into dz. Also the stratified soil having unit weight different for each layer. So, so in that case stress can be calculated by using the summation of gamma into delta z. So these are the different ways to calculate the stresses due to the self weight. Next one stresses due to external load. Here mainly this is due to the contact pressure. Pressure developed at the contact point of foundation and soil. You can see here this is the foundation. This is the uh, soil, soil portion. Uh, okay, so when the pressure is developed at the contact point of foundation and soil, that is called contact pressure, and this is mainly due to the external load. This is calculated by using sigma naught is equal to P divided by B into L, where sigma naught is contact pressure, P is point load, B into L is area, contact area. Okay. Stress distribution in the soil uh, with related to depth, intensity of stress decreases with the depth. Intensity of stress decreases radially from the point load. Okay, so this is just um, note. Intensity of stress decreases with the depth. Intensity of de uh, stress decreases radially from the point load. Now let us calculate the first uh, uh, criteria I mean uh, the stress due to a concentrated load or point load individual column footings or wheel loads may be replaced by equivalent point loads provided that the stresses are to be calculated at points sufficiently far from the point of application of point load there are uh, different methods mainly vertical stress due to concentrated Concentrated load can be calculated by Boussinesq equation or analysis and Westergaard analysis. Let us first uh, use uh, the uh, Boussinesq analysis. Uh, Boussinesq uh, published in uh, nine, 1885 a solution for the stresses beneath a point load on the surface of a material which had the following properties that is semi-infinite. This means infinite below the surface therefore 
providing no boundaries of the material apart from the surface. Next class will continue. Thank you.